Okay, let's do a pre-algebra level problem here. And of course, uh, if you're taking any class beyond pre-algebra, like Algebra 1, Algebra 2, College Algebra, you absolutely need to know this. But this is the kind of uh, stuff that you're learning at the pre-algebra level. So let's go ahead and review the problem and see if you can actually get the answer. And uh, here it is. So it's 6 is to 11 as 4 is to x, okay, as uh, 4 is to what number? Now, I'm not going to really comment any more about this problem right now because I want to give you an opportunity to think about it and solve it. So go ahead and put your answer into the comment section if you know how to solve this. And also, uh, tell me what the uh, description, what type of, what's the math topic that we're studying here, okay? So if you know what that is, then that's, you know, really, really good. But again, this is kind of like, you know, stuff that you have to do or uh, really kind of have to know at the pre-algebra level. And um, you're going to have a tough time uh, passing pre-algebra if you can't do a problem like this. So we're going to get into this. It's not that difficult. Uh, but uh, I'm going to talk about all of this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But if you are having a difficult time in mathematics, maybe you think you're bad at math. I'm here to tell you that that's not true. Okay, as long as you have the desire to learn math, what you need is the right instruction. Okay, so if you don't feel like you're getting the right instruction or enough instruction, then I've been teaching math for decades, and I really teach differently than a lot of uh, teachers. I really try to explain things in kind of like real super clear bite-sized pieces so anyone and everyone can understand this stuff, and anyone can. As long as you're willing to put the work in, I think I have the right instruction for you. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level in your math courses, I can help you out. Now, if you're preparing for any kind of test that has a math section on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, uh, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ACCUPLACE, or CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam. I can help you uh, prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, you got to check out my homeschool math courses. We were just voted number one for middle and high school uh, math by a major national publication. Very, very excited about that. And uh, if you need some math notes, I'm going to leave links to my notes in the description of this video as well, but uh, you're going to have a tough time getting great grades in math if you're not taking great math notes. So start improving your notes and you'll start seeing everything start to improve like magic. Okay, so let's get into this problem. 6 is to 11 as 4 is to x. So what is the topic that we're dealing with? Okay, well, let me go ahead and give you some uh, letters here. So it's typically written this way. And it's kind of, I'm going to have like fill in the blanks. So, uh, and I'll put some commas in. So we're talking about three words. One starts with an R, another one starts with an R, and the other one starts with a P. So can you guess what those are? Okay, put those into the comment section if you know what it is. So what are we talking about? We're talking about ratios, rates, and proportions. Okay, so ratio, rates, and proportions. And uh, this particular problem, um, we're dealing with ratios. So ratios use the word to, okay, rates uh, use the word per, and a proportion is something called uh, two equal fractions. Let me give you an example of this. So two is like the problem that we're dealing with right now. So if I say uh, you know, a two, uh, a, uh, that's, I'm using the word two, how about a different word? Three is to seven. Okay, this is three, and then this little fraction bar, we use the word two seven. Okay, three is two seven. Per would be like uh, 20 miles, okay, per one gallon, okay? So if you notice here, we're talking about different units of measure. That's a rate, and I'm just doing a quick, quick, quick review. But this little fraction bar, we would use the word per. That indicates a rate, and... Um, uh, you can see that this is a rate because the units of measure are different. We're comparing distance with uh, volume, all right? Now, ratios is when we have the same units of measure. And uh, I don't want to go too deep into this because, uh, you know, I'm kind of making uh, this video into a complete overview of all these uh, particular topics. But I have videos on rates, ratio, proportions, additional videos on my YouTube channel. Of course, I teach this super thoroughly in any one of my algebra courses. But just as a general uh, kind of overview, we were talking about ratios, 
uh, rates, okay? And these are both uh, types of fractions. There are fractions with particular type of units of measures, and proportions are two equal fractions. So if I have the fraction one half, and I um, write another fraction that's equal to one half, maybe like five over 10, okay? Two equal fractions are technically a proportion. And one of the characteristics of a proportion is the cross products are equal. Okay, in other words, if I multiply across, if you have two equal fractions, so here 1 times 10 is equal to 2 times 5. Okay, so 1 times 10 is 10, 2 times 5 is 10, so 10 is equal to 10. So when you're dealing with proportions, i.e. two equal fractions, we know that the cross products are equal. Okay, so this is just a quick, quick uh, overview of this particular uh, topic that you study pretty thoroughly at the pre-algebra level and beyond. But uh, now let's go ahead and get into our problem. And uh, let's go ahead and read it. So we have 6 is to 11, okay, as 4 is to x, or what number? Now, we can also write this this way. In other words, you can see this problem written with, these, uh, with this colon like this, okay? So this is another kind of notation for um, the word two. So this six and this uh, symbol right there, this colon right there, this means six, to, six is to 11 as four is to x. Now you didn't have to write this this way. I just put this in just to, uh, as a, an aside because you need to understand this notation right there, okay? So six uh, is to 11 as four is to x. So the key here is to write uh, these as fractions. So the first number is going to be our numerator, and our second number is going to be our denominator. All right, so this is going to be the numerator. This is going to be the denominator. So let's go ahead and do this. 6 is 2, 11. So 6, the fraction bar, means the word 2. Okay, so 6 is 2, 11. All right, so I'm writing this here as a fraction as... Okay, well, that means equal. Okay, 6 is to 11 as 4 is to x. Okay, so here, what, do I, what am I um, setting up? Well, I'm setting up two equal fractions. I have one fraction, and I'm saying it's equal to this fraction right there. Okay, so this right here is actually a proportion, right? Two equal fractions. And you're like, oh, okay, proportion, isn't that uh, where the cross products are equal? And yes, you would be absolutely right, okay? So this times this, okay, 6 times x is going to be equal to 11 times 4, and that's how we're going to be able to solve for x. So let's go ahead and do that now. So 6 times x is, of course, 6x. 11 times 4 is 44. And to solve this basic equation, hopefully you're up to speed on your basic algebra equations, all I need to do is divide both sides of the equation by 6. So I get x is equal to 44 divided by 6. And if you want to break out your calculator, uh, you're going to see that that's equal to 7.33333. The threes keep going forever. So the 3 is repeating. So you can put a nice little repeating bar over that. But that is the answer. All right, so how did you do? Okay, did you get that right? Well, if you got that right, then I must go ahead and give you a good old 1982 happy face with a good, yeah, let's put a flat top in there. Uh, these flat tops go back for many, many years. I think they were wearing those flat top haircuts definitely in the 50s. Uh, but in the, in the 80s, it was pretty cool too, all right? So let me give you an A+. Plus. That's cool and 100%. Nice job, okay? I don't see the flat top haircut around anymore. It's, uh, it's too bad, right? That's a nice haircut. I wore that for many years. Now in my middle age, okay, have uh, I have a little bit less hair uh, to wear that haircut as much as I like to. But anyways, that's a cool haircut. And if you know how to do this prom, uh, then that's even cooler. But nice job, okay? So um, again, uh, rates, ratios, proportions, big, huge topic in pre-algebra, algebra one, uh, even in geometry, okay, and any other uh, algebra course beyond uh, pre-algebra. So if you're taking pre-algebra, expect to learn about rates, uh, ratios, and proportions. Make sure you really study this well because this is a topic that comes up over and over and over again. It's a super important topic. But uh, if this little video helps you out, go ahead and con uh, consider helping me out by smashing that like button and subscribing to my YouTube channel. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I have over 1,000 plus uh, videos, basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. So please take advantage of that content. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. 
Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.